Greetings, Sky people. This is Molly from the Astro Imaging channel, which you are now watching. And tonight we have the illustrious John Talbot with us uh, once again. Before we get to his talk, a couple of administrative notes to go over. And I'll share my screen like Alex usually does. I am not Alex. He usually introduces the show. Um, he's watching football tonight at some sports ball stadium that's new, I guess. I don't know. Apparently football is important, but <laughs> uh, you can have fun with that. Um, yeah. So hopping on over first to our calendar of upcoming talks. So uh, John is talking tonight on noise reduction techniques in PixInsight. And this is probably kind of small, so I'm going to zoom in a bit. Um, and then uh, next week, we have Bruce Herwig, who is here with us tonight. Uh, Bruce, are you still here? That I am. Do you want to do you wanna, uh, talk for a couple seconds on what you'll be talking about next week? Absolutely. I'll be sharing on shooting the monsters of Borrego. Borrego Springs has some of the most amazing foreground images uh, that you could ask for, in, when, especially when you pair them with some Milky Way and some night sky images. So I'll be talking about some of the, uh, the places to go, some of the angles to be shooting, some of the things to be looking for, and sharing some of my uh, results. And so looking forward to uh, talking to, with you next week. Awesome. Yeah, I looked at some of his pictures and I was making the the uh, YouTube thumbnail and they look really cool. So that should be lots of fun. Um, all right, let me go back to sharing my screen here. All right, uh, upcoming after that, we have some talks on color mapping, narrowband astro images, the Dynamic Eclipse Broadcast Initiative. And we are going to be off on Super Bowl Sunday because it is a uh, more or less a national holiday here in the United States. So nobody's going to be on uh, in the States, at least watching this because they're going to be watching the football game instead. So we're just going to go ahead and cancel that show. Uh, after that, um, we've got Chris Barr coming on talking about his mobile astrophotography studio. And I love seeing people's mobile setups. So this should be really cool. Um, and lots more talks after that. We've got quite a few heading out all the way through April, which is really exciting. And of course, we're always looking for speakers. If you've got something that is interesting that you do that you want to share, whether that's something cool that you've done with your rig, uh, in, uh, uh, image processing technique, maybe you're a new imager and you're scrimping and saving, but you still have a, a cool rig that you've put together. Um, maybe you've built an observatory. All kinds of stuff. Uh, if you want to, even if it's a talk that that we've had before, the show's been on for several years now, and we always get new perspectives when somebody else comes on to give a talk, even on the same topic. So, you can reach us on our website under the contact link, and uh, one of us will get back to you and just let us know what you're interested in talking about, and we will get you scheduled. The show is run by a lot of volunteers and a lot of volunteer speakers. Over here on YouTube, we have our live chat. So this is a, the nice thing about having a live show like this is that this is your opportunity to ask questions of the speaker that we have on that night live and they will be answered. So especially when we're in these real tech heavy presentations about pics and site, like tonight's talk, it's a great opportunity to ask the speaker tonight, John, any questions you have during the presentation and learn a lot more that way. And uh, I'll put a little blurb in the chat on how to insert a question mark so that uh, you can help us see your question. And also people like to chit chat about how's the weather in your place and stuff like that. So join our chat. Please remember to, uh, if you subscribe to our channel, you uh, it'll, will show up on your YouTube page so that you never miss a show. We have our Facebook page where we make show announcements that you can follow. Just search for the Astro Imaging channel, either on YouTube or Facebook, and you will find us. And if you want to like tonight's video or any other videos, more likes helps us be more seen by more astrophotographers, and that helps everybody learn all the cool stuff that you're learning while watching this show. Um, so I think that's about it. Stop sharing my screen here. And uh, uh, we've got John back once again. He's given a couple talks on here. We love having him on. And I think it's about time to turn it over. John? 
Okay. Hey, Molly, thank you so much. And I guess you guys can hear me. Okay. Yes, um, yeah. Well, thanks for having me on again. Um, so tonight um, I've got a presentation that talks about some different uh, ways to do noise reduction in Pix Insight. And there's a little story behind this. Um, so I taught this the first time at Okitex this past year at the Okitex Star Party. We did a two day workshop there. And one of my uh, helpers in the class was a gentleman named Brent Newton. And you guys may know Brent um, from his Facebook stuff. He's a really awesome imager. And uh, he kind of helped me out, uh, you know, help people with computer problems. Well, a week or two before that, him and I were kind of talking and, uh, and Brent may be on tonight. I'm not sure if you are, Brent. <laughs> Again, thanks. Um, he mentioned that his noise reduction techniques that he used was uh, something that this gentleman named John Rista came up with. He said, hey, I use the Rista noise reduction technique. And I said, man, what is the Rista noise reduction technique? So I Googled John and found his website and lo and behold, here's this just extremely awesome noise reduction technique that was much better than the way I was doing it for years and years and years. So I researched it and I, I practiced that on a bunch of images and then I ended up talking to everybody about it at Okitex. So um, that's what I'm gonna do tonight. I'm gonna go uh, through the what's, what's called the Rista noise reduction technique and and to be honest i did talk to john i was able to get a hold of him he's a tough guy to get in touch with but i did send him an email through uh, astrobin and he got back with me and he tells me that uh, a gentleman named david alt and you guys may know david um really came up with this um early on and he kind of refined it um but it was uh you know I, I knew parts of it and i had done the same type of noise reduction uh, very similarly to the way he did it but he added some twists. So I'm gonna go talk about these twists. So let me uh, share my screen here and hopefully you guys will be able to see it. Let's see here. Okie doke, I think it's working. Okay, so um, what I wanted to um, mention is uh, John's website, first of all. Um, everything I'm gonna talk about is documented on his website and that, that's here. It's johnrista.com. Um, under the Astrophotographer's Guide, uh, if you click on PixInsight, Learn and Understand, it'll bring you to the page that I'm showing you right here. Okay, it talks about um, noise reduction techniques that uh, basically I think are, are he used with, um, you know, CMOS type cameras, cameras with a Bayer matrix. And if you go all the way to the bottom, and you can read all through through this stuff. This is all about noise, different types of noise, how noise is um, added to your image and so forth. Um, you'll get to an area at the bottom which um, has some links. And let me go down, cosmetic correction. This is all good stuff, by, by the way, so I encourage you to, to, to read it all. He's got some really good insights into, into uh, stuff about noise, especially with DSLR cameras. So down here, under his series, um, this part two and, and part three, uh, linear and nonlinear. Um, these are clickable links, and everything that I'm going to talk about is spelled out in these links, um, exactly the way he does it. And um, if you need to go back and look at stuff, you can always just go go to his website and click on the links here, like I just showed you and go through them. Um, you know, instead of having to write stuff down really quick uh, during the broadcast tonight, uh, you can always go back to this. So all that stuff is there. Now you'll have to tweak this stuff to your own, um, you know, for your own camera, your own uh, system. However, it, uh, it, it, you know, I've, I've been able to do it very easily. Um, you know, in, in practice over the last uh, three to four months. And this is my go-to noise reduction technique now. So um, again, go, go to his website if you want to read about it and everything you wanted to know about how to do, do this um, after you see the presentation is on the website. So um, enough of that. So, okay, so I'm going to go to Pix Insight here and I just... Uh, I've got a couple images that I'm going to go through this technique with you. 
Um, and I'm going to start with um, an image that's uh, just a color image. So something maybe you would get off um, a uh, Bayer Matrix camera. In, in, in my case, I, I made an RGB image out of monochrome data. Um, I was actually shooting this little, there's a little planetary nebula away from the bubble up here. It's called uh, KJPN8, and it's right in here. You can kind of barely see it there. If I can zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, there it is right there. So I took a bunch of uh, RGB HA data, and I was really kind of focusing on this planetary nebula um, instead of the bubble. But if we look at this image, you know, you can see the, the noise. And this is, you know, stretched pretty hard. It's about um, four hours worth of data on each channel, or each red, green, and blue channel. This was taken with um, a uh, six-inch refractor um, with an ASI 6200 uh, full-frame camera. And I've got uh, just a crop of the image field because the image is way too big. This is uh, 60 megapixels. Um, so this is just a smaller portion of it to go through this, so it kind of goes a little quicker. But you can see the noise, and it's kind of grainy. Okay, so the first thing you really want to do is we need we need to be able to pull out a luminance because we're going to be making some masks. And the idea behind this is we want to reduce the noise down to a level that is acceptable for us, but we don't want to get rid of all the graininess in the image because you graininess in your background, at least a little bit, that's kind of faint, adds a little sharpness to your images. You know, you don't want to have images that are, are that you've totally wiped out the noise and it's, it's uh, you know, smooth as butter. That's not a good thing. Um, it kind of reduces, it kind of makes them look muddy. It reduces um, contrast a little bit. It, it just doesn't look as sharp. So the idea is you want to leave a little bit of this graininess in the background so especially when you zoom in to your image at maybe a one by a one times one size, you know, you can see a little bit, but it's not, you know, in your face. And uh, we're going to be getting rid of the high, the high definition noise here and some of the low like blotchiness. Um, you know, if you've ever seen dark uh, spots in your images, there's one there. And, you know, there's a lot of this red blotchiness. And so um, that's kind of the idea of what the goal is here. So to begin with, we need to pull out a luminance from this to make a mask. And if you're working on a color image, the thing you need to remember is you need to ensure that you're pulling out equal amounts of red, green, and blue. And to do that, you open up this tool in PixInsight called RGB Working Space. And you can see this is the contribution of the, the, di the different amounts of red, green, and blue in, in this image. But if I just went up here to the top, and if you don't know where it is, on the top bar of PixInsight, this little button here is the Extract Luminance button. This one's the Extract RGB. So if you just hit that now, you wouldn't get all of the data from each channel. So the way, the way we fix that is we just bring these up to one, you know, on each channel, and then we apply it to the image. And that makes sure that, uh, you know, when we click luminance, everything comes out. And if I hit the little track button, you can see now each channel has the same equal amount here. All right, so I'm going to pull out a luminance image here. And this is a linear data, I should say, if I hadn't already said that. And I'm just going to screen stretch it. And, you know, it's uh, for a for a Mac, which I'm using, it's Command A. For a Windows machine, I believe it's Control A. It's just a uh, automatic screen stretch here, and we can see, you know, if I zoom in, you can kind of see, yeah, it's kind of grainy too. So I'm going to make a couple copies of this, and we're going to call them a couple different names. Uh, the idea here is we're going to make some very bright, low contrast masks to overlay on the image and then apply TGV denoise and then some MMT noise reduction through those masks. And those masks are gonna protect a lot of the image and allow some of that noise reduction to come through. So we need to build the mask. So um, we're gonna name one of these things here. We'll just name this one uh, luminance mask at first. Okay.
All right, so there's my luminance mask. And I'm just going to just stretch it uh, using uh, uh, the screen stretch. So let me open up my histogram transformation. I'll do that there. Here we go. Oh, yeah, I need to get my screen transfer function too here. Uh, let me open that up. Let me take a look at that. All right. Yeah, I'm working on a zoomed-in screen here, so it's a little bit tougher than me than normal to see what I'm doing. Okay, so um, here's my uh, luminance mask, and I just auto-screen stretched it, and I'm just going to drag that up to the histogram window, and we're just going to stretch it um, with the screen transfer function automatically there. Of course, it turns white because the screen transfer function is on, so I just reset that. And now we have a stretched image here. Uh, let me get rid of this. I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'm going to call this one my TGV mask. So just write that in there so, so I can remember what I'm looking at. Okay, so I've got a luminance mask, which is going to be used within the TGV denoise uh, process itself within the app. And then a mask called TGV, TGV mask, which is going to be manipulated here. And we're going to apply this to the image. So the first thing you do is you open up um, curves. And like I said, this is all in the website. It's all in step by step. And we, we need to make this image um, kind of muddy, kind of very low contrast and muddy. So we're going to bring the highlights down to 0.5. And we're going to bring the black point up to about 0.2 here. And we're going to apply that to the image. And you're going to see it's going to kind of look kind of just blah. It's just kind of a, a mucky looking thing, which is really kind of what, what we want. Okay, so that's that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the histogram tool and we're going to stretch this and we're going to bring it all the way up to the peak of the histogram, which is here, up to 0.5. Okay, about like that. And we're going to apply it to our image. And this is going to create a very bright, low contrast image. There we go. There it is. So this is going to be our mask that we're going to overlay on our image, and we're going to invert it just like we would if we were using a, a mask in uh, maybe Photoshop or other software that you're used to using. And by the way, this technique could probably be used just as easily within Photoshop or with other, other um, processing software like uh, maybe Astro Pixel Processor. You may not have the exact same tools like uh, TGV Denoise or MMT uh, Transform, but you have similar tools. And um, the mask is the important part. So um, you ought to give it a try if you don't have PixInsight. Just because you don't use that, it, uh, it may work just fine in Photoshop, and I'm almost positive it will. Okay, so here's our mask. Our histogram has been stuck at about 0.5, the peak of our histogram. Turn that off and get rid of it again. And I'm going to apply this to the image. And the thing I always forget to do, and you'll always forget to do until you do it about 20 times, is make sure that you go up and you uh, invert the mask. So let's see here where I got to go. All my stuff has been hidden because of my, my window is changed. You could just go to the uh, mask menu. Yeah, I guess I can go up here uh let's see where is it oh i don't you need to select the um the the masked image first oh yeah the other image yeah there you go okay yes yeah, well, I just, well, all i want to do is invert the mask that's right yeah. so um yeah i normally work off all the tools on the bar when everything is kind of zoomed in but anyways so we want to invert the mask and i normally don't like to see it so i turn it off and i can see what happens in the image but um, I don't like to see the mask on the image. So I'm just going to create a little preview here. 
maybe in an area that's got some high signal and some low signal like there there's some background down in here and there we go you can kind of see some of the some of the graininess to the image there there's the bubble up here okay so i'm going to go to tgvd noise and open that up and what i'm going to select for my um local support is my luminance mask which we uh we have that off to the side there so i'm going to select that i have to turn that on and i'm going to say okay where is it here we go there's my luminance mask um the next thing we want to do is in this case i'm just going to do this you know some people use tgvd noise they use it in c lab mode and they can apply different versions of noise reduction to the chrominance data compared to the luminance data. In this case, we're just going to leave it on RG, RGBK mode. Uh, we're going to apply everything to the image straight on. So the way TGV denoise works is it looks at the image in a multi-scale level and it applies noise reduction um, kind of, it'll, it'll apply one iteration, then it'll recalculate the entire image and and apply another in, um, iteration, then recalculate the entire image again. So it works a different way than most noise reduction tools do. The thing you have to remember is the defaults in PixInsight don't always work good. And in, this is one of those ca cases. We have to typically change this exponent here. So normally what I found in all the images, and I've done maybe 15 or 20 images now with this method is Minus six tends to work pretty good. And I start out with an edge protection of about five. Um, I could start out with two, it'd probably be okay. But I start out with five and then I go from there. And we start out with 100 iterations and we're gonna apply that to that. And then after we're done and we're happy with sort of what we're seeing, we're gonna increase the iterations to 500. So let's throw this in here and let's see what happens. Hopefully it'll go pretty quick since this is a little image. And I'll stop after I do this one section here. And if anybody has any questions, we can uh, we can answer them at that point. Okay. So um, here is our image that, let me go find my before and after tool here. Let's see, where are you? I think you're going to be here somewhere. Uh, here we go. Okay, so there's before and after. And I don't know if you guys can see that. That's before, that's after. And let me zoom in just a little bit more here. Before and after. Hopefully, hopefully you can see a lot of the, the high noise has kind of been muted a lot. It just goes away. But nothing has happened to high signal areas up here. And, it, and we leave ourselves some of that graininess in the background. We don't have a totally flat, featureless background. There's before and after. Okay, so that's, that's about the right amount to, to, to do on this image. Now, say I wanted to, say it wasn't enough and I wanted to add more. Um, well, I could just take this edge protection. Let me see. Let's move it up to here. Let's make it maybe a little bit too much. Um, and see what it looks like here. And you'll see, I think, what you don't want to do. It'll go pretty quick here. Well, it doesn't look too bad, actually. Um, go before. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad either. But the way you would adjust how much you're applying is either with the edge protection tool here or you could actually go down let's see if i go down to five let's see what happens when i do five i think it's we're gonna we're gonna have a situation where we see way too much noise reduction and it's kind of what you don't want to do you don't want to have that butterly smooth background in your image okay no, just the opposite. 
Okay, where's my mask? Mask. So I'm going to do a little trick here on the invert mask thing. You're going to see. So when you forget to invert your mask, this will be. Uh, um, you'll notice. You'll know. To, you'll you'll know it right away because you'll notice things just don't look right. Um, okay, that's a little bit too much. Trying to get to the point where we get the butter, <laughs> which is what you don't want to see. All right, that's obviously bad. And that's definitely a hint to tell you, you need to raise your, uh, your uh, exponent in the edge protection. So I'm just gonna go back to six and we're just gonna do that and we'll just move on from this point. If you get an image that looks way too butterly smooth, either you didn't um, invert your mask. That's I had that happen to me actually today when I was playing around with this on an image. Um, and sometimes, sometimes it'll actually work. So I don't, I don't have my mask inverted right now. And look, it doesn't look too bad. But I'm applying way too much noise reduction probably to the, uh, to the uh, high signal areas here. Okay. One last shot, and then we're going to go. Okay, so I got something I like. I'm just going to apply it to my image instead of just the preview. And we'll let it roll on that, and that will take a little bit longer probably. Hopefully not too long. So after this is done, um, the second step is to actually do some more noise reduction using the uh, MMT tool in PixInsight. And if I didn't mention it earlier, this is done on a linear image. This is not a stretched image. The whole idea with this is the more you can do on an image when it's in the linear state before you stretch it, the better off you'll, you are in the end when you finally do stretch it. So all this noise reduction is taking place um, when the image is linear. Is there any questions out there while we're waiting for this to get done? Hi, John. I've got one question from Linda. Yeah. Why, why is using the linear mask as local support better than just using the target image? Why is using the luminance mask better than uh, just I using the target? I think that was answered yeah. in chat because uh, she didn't realize that you were operating in linear mode. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, if, if that's all taken care of, then we'll just move, move on. But yes, we're using, you, you want to use a black and white mask. You don't want to use a, I mean, you could use a color mask, I suppose, but all masking in most astronomical image processing software usually should be done using a black and white mask which is, I just used, you know, luminance is black and white. So that's what we did there. Okay, so here's an image that's, uh, I can go back again and take a look at it. And uh, let's see here, we'll go back. Here's the original. Okay, there's the new one. And we still have a little graininess in the background, but a lot of that noise has gone away. Okay, so that's step one. Okay, step two is we are going to take, let me go find my luminance mask. There it is. Just get it out of the way so I know where it's at. We're going to make a copy of this. Okay. And we're going to call it um, our MMT mask. It's, this is our second one. All right, so here's our MMT mask. And what we're gonna, again, this is stretched already. I just made a copy of the luminance, which was just screen stretched. So it's a stretched image. We're gonna go to our histogram transformation again. This time with this one, instead of using curves, we're gonna go right to the histogram tool and we are going to drag this buddy over to about 0.85 which is somewhere is about right in there. That's where you want your peak, about 0.85.
and um, this is going to make it really, really bright. And when we apply the MMT transformation tool, it's only going to allow it to get through in places that it are really, you know, the darker areas of the background. It's not really going to allow it to get through as much on uh, the brighter areas. Now, you can to give yourself a little bit more leg room if, if you have a lot of overexposed areas in your, in your image. You can, you, you can adjust the uh, low range and the high range a little bit to, um, so you're, you know, give yourself a little headroom in, in, in the upper end. In my case, you know, I really have never had to mess with that, but John does mention that you can do that. And I tried it and it didn't seem to make too much of a difference. What I will tell you though, is if you apply the, a mask, right, and you run the tool, whichever tool it is, and maybe it doesn't do as much as you want it to, or maybe it does too much. You can always come back and adjust your mask. Just like the the other, um, the uh, TGV denoise mask, we uh, set the peak at about 0.5. You can move this up and down a little bit on either side of that until you get the result you want. But what I found is, you know, this is pretty highly tuned already, and it tends to work really well the way he has it written out. So um, here's this one up around maybe around 0.85 and I'm going to apply it to the MMT mask and we're going to see a really, really bright mask. I mean, that looks like a, it's a really low contrast, but really bright mask. And um, we're going to apply this to our image. And even though I, you know, you can do it two ways. I can remove the mask or I can just take this one and just apply it. It'll, re it'll replace it. I just have to make sure that I remember to go and invert it. So I'm going to go mask invert. And I'm going to go back to my little preview here. Okay, so I'm going to come down to maybe this darker area down here where you, you can see a little bit more of the noise. Now I created some uh, process icons um, from stuff that he had written on his website. You can do this too. If, if you don't know how to do a process icon, it's fairly easy um, because this one has a lot of, a lot of stuff in it. Um, there's actually noise reduction going on from uh, layer one through layer eight. So the first thing you need to do when you open up multi-skill medium transform is remember that uh, you got to select eight layers here, you know, the max. And these, these values here, don't worry about writing them all down because they're all listed on his website. But it applies some noise reduction through all the layers through the mask. And this was the part I didn't know about. I knew about making a, a bright, low contrast mask for TGVD noise. I kind of just stumbled upon it years ago. Um, but I never, I would always be left with something like you're seeing in the image here, all these little, you know, these little dots. And maybe I want to smooth this some more, but if I use TGV denoise again, it's it's just going to be too much. So this is the technique that uh, I found really intriguing from him, um, and it works really, really well. So let me, uh, whoop, I just stretched it by accident. Yeah, we go down. Okay, where are we here? Okay. All right, let me get my bearing again. I'm going to move this down a little bit. Okay, so I've got my mask on there. It's inverted. I'm just going to apply this um, MMT multi-scale medium transform to the image. And it's going to do it through that very, very bright mask. It's going to do it more in the darker areas, the less in the brighter areas. And this will take a second because it's got to compute the transform. But uh, once, you, once it does this, it works just as fast on your main image. Pretty, uh, pretty interesting how that works. Okay, so let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Now, let's, uh, let me go back. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that. Here is before. Let me zoom in a little bit. Here's after, before, after. You can see it kind of takes some of that, um, some of the color blotchiness in the background here, and it kind of mutes it. Um, 
it doesn't it shouldn't affect anything in the brighter the stars don't change but it does affect the background a little bit so this is kind of a you know it's a multi-step process here that we're doing every little bit helps okay and let me apply it to my image And then we're going to have an image that uh, looks pretty darn good right off the get-go. And it's uh, it's linear, and we can go ahead and, and stretch it afterwards here. Okay, so. All right, so here's our image. And I'm going to zoom into some area. Uh, yeah, on that. I'm going to back out. I'm going to go before MMT before TGV. So there's before TGV, TGV denoise, MMT denoise. So you can see it got progressively better with each one of those. And now it's pretty darn nice. It's got a little bit of the graininess to the background still. Um, but what we've done now when it, when it comes to stretching an image, we look at the, the histogram of the image, it's given us a lot more room on the left-hand side of the image where a lot of the noise resides. So if I zoom into the histogram here, this, we've gained more room here to lower the black point now down and, cre and create more contrast in the image. Because a lot of the noise that's in the background that was down in this level of the histogram has been shifted over now, it's, it's gone. So when we go to stretch the image, I'm just kind of doing it, uh, Let's see here on the fly here. I'm going to take this. Yeah, I have my screen way too big here, but take this over to here. All right, I'm going to take that about like that. Maybe that about like that. And bring it back here. Okay, so that's probably, yeah, that's probably where I would stretch it. So, I mean, here we're zoomed in one-to-one, -one, and if you can see the noise in there, I mean, you can see a little bit of the, a little bit of the graininess of the background, and that's what you want, but most of the noise is pretty much gone, and, and that's, that's pretty darn nice, and this kind of blew me away when I first did this, um, that, you know, it works so well. Okay, so, say I want to stretch the image like that, right, and I'm just going to make it a, uh, stretched image now drag the histogram transformation to it all right so now it's stretched whoop oh it didn't it stretch <laughs> oh i know why it didn't stretch well maybe it did here let me uh uh oh oh i know what i did yeah sorry guys i didn't take the mask off of course i because i can't see that my darn tool here uh enable mask i do that all the time yeah i know <laughs> yeah. so that should be where we're at i think that's what i want here yep that's what i want so yeah i'm normally used to looking at that the little tool up on top there all the time just a different way of doing it okay so here's our stretched image um so say I want to do some more stuff to this, right? So say I want to stretch it some more. I use some other tools. Oh, I change some things. I see, you know, my blue and green channel is a little offset from my red. I can fix that. I can go here and, you know, I can bring this down about like where it should be, about right there. And say I really want to, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to stretch it way too much, most likely for you guys. But I'm going to go on to the last uh, section of noise reduction here. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make it, uh, yeah, we see some more graininess showing up again. So if you get to the point where you stretch your image a little too much or the noise creeps back in on you, um, the second part of this is when your image is not is nonlinear. It's, it's, uh, it's stretched. And here is, here is the point where we use what's, we use the, ACD, ACDNR noise reduction, which tends to work a lot better on a linear, non-linear image. So to uh, do that, we're going to make a mask again. And guess what? We're just going to copy the uh, luminance mask. 
here. And with this one, a little bit different. Um, this one we're going to stretch up to 0.5. Okay, take your histogram peak up to 0.5, but this time we're gonna we're gonna give ourselves a little more headroom on either end. We're gonna use on the low end 0.5 and on the high end 0.5 or 1.5 in the case of the tool here. So it kind of looks like that. So we've given us some room here on both sides of the of the histogram to play. And I'm gonna apply that to the image. And again, look, we have a low contrast, but bright mask. There it is. Okay, so now we're going to apply this to our image. And you may have done a whole bunch of other processing, and you notice your noise crept up um, on, your, uh, on, on, your, on your image. And uh, this will hopefully take care of that. Okay. Show mask. We're going to invert the mask again. Remember to invert it. Okay, so now we're going to apply ACDN, ACDNR noise reduction through that mask. And again, I made a, um, a process icon for the settings that uh, he recommended. You can play back and forth with your system. It may be a little bit different than the settings he recommended, but his stuff worked good with DSL, DSLR data, and I'm sure it's going to work just fine with color CMOS data and stuff like that. Um, somewhere is between 1.5 and 2 for your standard deviation, and about 50% of uh, for the amount. And um, let's see, we're going to do here i'm going to leave that at three because this is more for uh this is really going to apply more to the more to the uh, luminance versus the color data although you know um there is probably some color noise in there still so i, I put on a lightness standard deviation of two amount 50 percent six iterations is what i typically like to do and I let that run, and it's going to run that through the mask, hopefully. I did everything right here. And you're going to see the noise jump down again just a little bit. Done here in just a second. So again, there's three steps to this. There's uh, two, two of those steps in the linear phase and then one step here in the nonlinear phase. And you can do this step actually multiple times if you really wanted to. Oh, I did something wrong. Because look at that, that looks like yuck. So what did I not do right? Maybe I didn't employ the mask correctly. Let's see here. Let me, I don't even think my mask is on there. Interesting. I don't think the mask is applied to my image. I wonder. A quick way to see if the mask is on there is um, that tab with the image name will be orange when you have a mask on it. Well, it's normally brown on my machine. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, in orange brown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's not it's not shown it there at all. That's really interesting. Huh. Um, it looks like the mask. Uh, you know, let me uh, uh, let me try it showing it earlier. Yeah, oh, you've well, got you've got the right image, the right base image selected, right? Like uh Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm just working on this one here. And okay, yeah, yeah. Not working on the preview. We're working on the the right. actual image itself. And it's right there, um, and I'm selecting my MMT mass. No, I don't want that. I want my ACDNR mass, which went right. No, that's the TGB mass. Oh. So it's this one. <laughs> I just did rename it. So I got myself into trouble because I didn't rename it. Yeah, that should have been it right there. Um, anyways, let me see if I can apply it to it. Well, interesting. 
I don't know. Had this happen? Uh, maybe hit that remove mask button. Yeah, well, try I mean, again. Well, it doesn't show any. I I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it's just weird. I mean, it's normally it just goes right on there without any problem. Um, I don't know if. Okay, it should take it. Huh? That's weird. Well, you could always do it the 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 uh, other way where you go to mask select mask. Well, yeah. So just kind of force select, it. Select mask. Let's try this. Let's see here. We're gonna do. Okay. Here? I guess it is there. That tab is yeah. not turning orange. It's weird. It says it's there. Yeah. Huh. Uh, maybe maybe show mask just to make extra extra. Yeah. Color. Well. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. All it's right. there. Huh? Yeah. yeah. All right. Weird. Well. Okay. Well, let's try this again. Let's see what happens again. Let me just do it to the pre preview. It should uh, let's make sure I got everything right. Okay, 2.5, yeah, should be all right. Let's try it there. And this is, the, if this works out right, yeah, let me see. Uh, it's a little bit too much. I did something wrong here. I, uh, I'm just going to take that down to two. The joys of doing this live. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's. That's the default setting for it. I've got something not right. And it's to what if I go to no, I don't have that. Let me try this again here. I can guarantee it does work. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna what if I turn this way down to like 25% just to kind of give you guys an idea of what it should look like. Yeah, that's kind of what it should look like. Uh, maybe even a little bit less than that. Um, it's going to be a kind of a, you know, it, it, it leaves a little bit of the graininess there, but it does definitely smooth things out. Okay, so let me go to let's check out Okay. Now, where did my other stuff go? <laughs> my before and after button. Where are you? Oh, there you are. You're over here. There you are. Okay, there's before, there's after, before, after, before, after. Um, this just may be an image where it's going to be better to be at the lower end. Maybe 1.5, somewhere between 1.5 and 2. And I actually did, I actually processed the full frame image of this today and it worked great on the uh, default settings. So I don't know what's going on here. So, um, but when you try it, I bet you it'll work just fine. Okay. So you can kind of see some of that color noise definitely is going away. So I am going to get rid of it off the color. Uh, John, we have a lot of people asking whether the mask is enabled or not. Is that just in the UI not reflecting that it's enabled? Well, that's what Molly and I were talking about. Yeah. Um, see, it doesn't show it over here. The, for some reason, I'm not showing this should be brown or an orange color when my mask is on the image. However, if I go to mask and show mask, it's on the image. <laughs> so... Um, I think there's something going on in the software, in the program itself, that for some reason it's just not doing it right. But I'm gonna. That's okay. So we're we're gonna move we're gonna move on anyways. So you no get problem. an image that's sort of uh, you know you, you can see what's happened to the noise. The graininess has gone down. It's very fine grain now versus the rough stuff. So that's hey, a color image. Hey John, can I interrupt yeah. you for a second? Absolutely. You might want to pull that back up and pull your mask menu down again. Okay. I see that enable mask is unchecked. Is it? And there you go. There's your mask. Ah, there it is. There's always something, you know, when you're doing this live, right? That's okay. right. Oh, I didn't realize yeah. that you could enable it separately from having it 
applied. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Well, well, you you can, and like I said, I normally see, I normally use the hot buttons up here. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never tend to even look up there at that stuff, and you can see when it's enabled. Okay, so there we go. That's better. Well, thanks. Okay, so uh, let me go back here. That's before and that's after. And you can see it's kind of a slight. It's it's a it's a little effect. It's not it's not a huge effect, but it is a little bit of a of a reduction, a further reduction of the noise. But when we're all said and done, we still have a little bit of that graininess in the background, and that's what we want. That gives our image a little bit more sharpness when we're all done um, processing it. So that's what a color image typically would look like. And if we go up here to let me get rid of this guy. To the, I haven't really touched anything in these really bright areas up, up here. Um, if I go before, I don't think you're going to see much of a change at all up there. Well, a little bit with AC, AC yeah, with a, a little bit with, with it. But you're protecting this a lot more than you are the darker areas, and the stars are pretty much protected. Nothing really happened to the stars. So that's a color image, and I'm going to go through this again uh, real quick on a black and white image. So we're just going to take... Uh, let me just take this HA image. This is the same region. This is just the HA shot. Um, I'm going to make a copy of it. Again, I'm going to go a little quicker here. I'm going to call this my luminance mask. Okay. I'm going to screen stretch it. Where's my histogram? There we go. I'm going to drag it over here and screen stretch it and like that. Okay. It's that. Now I'm going to take curves and 0 0.2, 0 0.5. It's going to make it look like muck. Like that. And then on the histogram, Transformation, I'm going to drag the peak up to 0.5, like that. It's going to brighten it up quite a bit, like that. Very low contrast. And now I'm going to drag this to my image. Let's see if it shows up here. Ah, look at that. It shows up on this one. So it's there. I'm going to go invert my mask. And I don't want to show it. Okay, TGVD noise. And I think we'll find that the same settings are going to apply pretty well with this. Um, minus six, I'm going to start out about five or so for the edge protection. Create a preview and run it on a preview here. Let's see here. Preview. Like that. All right, and you can see this is actually about oh, 19 hours worth of HA data. So it's it's pretty, it's not noise free by any means, but there, it has a lot less noise than RGB Im image. Okay, so I'm gonna run a hundred iterations there on that. Let's see. One thing I didn't do on the other image is uh, after you like what you got for TGV, you run it at 500 iterations. And that's, yeah, there we go. So it's that one. And let's look at before and after. So before and after. And zoom in a little bit. Before and after. Before and after. A lot of the, the black dots, maybe from calibration or just other bits of noise in there, they tend to disappear. But uh, we still have a little bit of graininess in the background there. You can kind of see it. And... Gonna go here, run it on the image. I'll change this to 500 like I should have before. And oh, but what I didn't do, I didn't select the right luminance mask. It should be that one. Shame on me. Let's see if it makes a difference. I don't think it's good. It probably isn't gonna make a whole lot of difference because the they're pretty close, but HA is different, different than uh Luminance data, so it's probably going to be a little, yeah, it didn't really make too much of a difference there. So 
All right, 500 iterations. We'll let that roll. Is there any questions uh, out there right now while this is running? Apparently the folks in the chat spotted the enable mask thing uh, quite a yeah. while ago. So. Yeah, that, that, that definitely got, got me. I wish I was more used to using the upper menu there, but I do all my stuff. Terry, you're supposed to be watching the chat. What are you well, doing? Sleeping over yeah. there? <laughs> we, do have, we, we do have one from John oh asking goodness. more about uh, process history. He's yeah. wearing it. Um, can he love to be able to see the history of uh, replayed? Uh, he would like to be able to look at the entire history and apply it to a new image. Is that possible? Well, the history will show you what you did to the image. Um, the problem is your masks are going to be different, right? Um, depending upon what image you're working on. So, like in this case here, we're working on a black and white image, right? So say after this, I had O3 data and I wanted to do it, do the same process on O3 data. I could look at my history and I, it would actually pull up TGDV, you know, TGVD noise with the right settings, but I'm definitely going to need a different mask. Uh, the O3 mask will, is built from the O3 image. The HA mask is built from the HA image. So... Um, here, so I know he's saying, hey, load up this and, hey, can I just run that? And Well, yeah, you can do that. Um, if I go to Load History Explorer and I double click on that, it'll bring TGVD noise up with the right settings that you can reuse because they're the same from image to image. Um, what did I, I see, did. Did I see in the history that it, that it tells you the name of the mask that you applied? Yes. Okay, does, so right that here. can be handy because if you save yeah. a copy of your mask and use and right. and use that name, then you can reference back to what mask you use if you want to use it again. If you yeah process of yeah, I I typically name my mask like what I should have done is name this one HA Luminance Mask, mm -hmm. um, like I have the RGB one above that we just did. Okay, so that's TGBD noise, and if we look at the image there, we'll go. We'll just go back forward there we go so you can kind of see me zoom way in before after before after so a little bit of grain left but a lot of that blockiness went away okay so now i'm going to grab that luminance mask again um yeah you know what i should have uh, i'm gonna have to back off on this one uh let's see here yep it's gonna let me go. I'm going to take this before curves and before histogram. Well, I'm going to go back. I didn't make a copy of it before I messed with it. So either way, make believe I made a copy of it. So here's my <laughs> copy of my luminance mask. So I'm going to take this and we're let's see here. Yeah, okay. Yep. All right, luminance mask. I'm going to grab that and run it up to about 0.5. There, like that. It's going to give me a bright mask again, but contrast. Contrast isn't all that hot, which is what we want. Okay, let me get rid of this mask here. Remove mask. Back to this guy. This mask in here like that. No mask. Whoops. Invert it. Okay. So now I've got my... Um, mask on there and bring up MMT noise reduction again. You can change this to a uh, luminance if you wanted to or lightness. I tend to always leave it on RGB. It doesn't matter. It knows it's a, it's not an RGB image and it's just going to apply it to one channel. But um, um, you have an, an, an option there. I just leave it there like that. So let's see what this does here. Hopefully I did it right. Uh, 
probably a little too much, but let's go back. Yeah, I think it's going to be something to do with my mask. My mask, I didn't like my mask. Okay, it's inverted. Huh. So I know what I did. Go mask. Actually, I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm going to take this back here. I'm going to do something. Why is... Ah, okay. I'm going to go back to the initial state there. That should be my original image. Okay. Make a copy of it. And screen stretch it should be fine here. I'm just rebuilding my masks. I think I messed up my mask when I did that last uh, MMT. So there's that. And I'm going to rename this now so I know what the heck I'm doing here. It's my MMT mask. Okay. So it's stretched. And I want to take this. No, I'm going to run this up to about 0.5. That's, this one's kind of interesting. It's got a double peak. I'm going to do something here. I'm going to pop this down just a little bit like that. Yeah, there we go. Apply that to the image, to the mask. Okay. There's my bright, low contrast mask. There's my image. There's my MMT mask. Apply that image show mask there we go invert it all right I think I got that right this time <laughs> um you know what uh, I need to go forward crap Okay, apply the mask again. Okay, I think I'm ready now. So, T. I think we are. I think we are good to go. Let's go down to the darker areas. Yeah, let's see what she looks like here. Yeah, I'm gonna make that mass brighter. So this is an example where it's 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 do it's doing too much to the image, right? So if I take my histogram transformation, I go like that. I go like that. My mask. Hope you guys just saw what I did there. Now, it, it, it actually changed the mask. The mask is still applied, and it, I made the mask a lot brighter, and I, I put it where it should have been in the first place. <laughs> I don't know if you caught it, but uh, I had it wrong. Should have been up there. The peak should have been about 0.85. I had it at 
Oh, but you know what? Try inverting the mask. That would help. Yeah, you guys that do everything through the menu bar, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> but hopefully we're good. Ah, okay. I think we're good. So now I think we are good. Before and after. Before, after. It's a little bit of an effect. Um, now this this uh, HA image is a lot less noisy anyways, but you can kind of see some of the dark blotches kind of go away a little bit. Um, and you don't want to have a drastic effect anyways. Here you go. Here's. So that's um, what it looks like there. And I like it, so I'm going to apply it to my main image. And then I would move on to uh, stretching this and going fur further and then using that ACDNR process later on. So here is, um, here is the image. Let's go to a spot where you can go back to the beginning. All right. So well, you know what? I got rid of my TGV. Thing. I wanted to show you guys, but you got to, you, you, you got the idea. You saw it on the other one. So that's kind of what you do. Um, and you end up with an image that has a little bit of grain in the background. So, which is exactly what you want uh, when you're all said and done. So, yeah, I think I'm about out of time though. So, okay, John, okay, John, <laughs> we, John we've got uh, a comment from Adam indicating that there's subtle differences between working in RGB space versus, versus CIA when uh -huh. working with GGV denoise. Yes. With the same values, you'll get slightly different results. It's just, just worth noting. Um, you mean um, working on a color image versus a black and white image? Uh, running, running uh, using the same values with GGV denoise, working in the RGB space versus the CIA space. You'll yeah, get there slightly may be, different values. There, there may be slightly different values. I haven't really tried it. Um, I just run it in that one space, and it ends up, um, you know, seems to work pretty darn good for me every time I do it. So, um, yeah. So let me um, go back. All right. So um, that's kind of how that works. And the more you practice it, the better you'll get with it. And I'm, I'm at the point now where I, I know the values. And I can run right through this. Um, usually, you know, it's part of my workflow. And I end up with the last, I guess, five or six images I've put together. I've all done this way. And um, even when you zoom way into the image, you can still see a little bit of that grain. And that's what you want. Oh, I see Alex is here. Okay. Hi, Alex. So, um, yeah. So that's, that's what it's all about. And I, I, I need to, you know... Thank this guy, John Rista. I wish I had a chance to shake his hand because this is a really, really cool technique. And uh, I need to thank Brent if he's watching for uh, turning me on to it because it's, uh, you know, it kind of changed the, my workflow of really the way I do noise reduction now. Uh, this is the only technique I do I, I, or I, I use. So, um, yeah. Any more uh, questions out there? Notes? Do I need to show anybody again? I think that's okay. Molly, do you see any? Um, yeah, I think you got it. Um, yeah, maybe just to remind people one more time uh, how, to, how to get to his website with the step-by-step. -step. Yeah, so let me um, share my screen again here. Stand by. Okay. Okay, hopefully you can see it. Um, so it's johnrista.com. Um, all the steps are on his website. You have to modify these steps to uh, work with your images a little bit. But I tell you what, I found a lot of the basic settings to be really, really good. Um, I've tried this with a DSLR 
uh, you know, one shot color type um, image. And man, it worked wonderfully. And of course, it works wonderfully with, uh, you know, normal uh, monochrome images that you uh, later would do something with. Now, I will say um, um, another thing, if, you know, some people have asked me, well, should I do it? I've got a red, green, and a blue, an RG and a B. Should I run it separately on each one of those first and then make an RGB image? Or should I run it on the RGB image together? And the answer is create your RGB image and just run it once on that image. Just extract the luminance out of the RGB image and use that as your mask. So it works just fine on a color image. So um, johnrista.com. Thank you, John. So yeah. There we go. So hopefully you guys got something out of this and learned something different. I know I did when I first saw this. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, John, for coming on again and showing us some nitty gritty picks and sight stuff. And uh, hopefully people will be able to to try that out and work through some of the sticky wickets and, and uh, get some nice images out of it. So thank you so much again for coming on. Uh, we have uh, we have our regular MC with us for the moment, Alex. Do you have any closing notes? Who won the football game? <laughs> You're muted. We'll I'm also time. eating graham crackers. I just got back. <laughs> barely got back. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Sorry to miss. It's particularly John, uh, but um, you know that's life. My first time I went to a pro game, so. Who won? Uh, the other guys, the Niners won. They uh, mm. it was overtime, and uh, they scored to go ahead with I don't know three or four minutes left. Then the Rams scored to tie it up, or win, or something like that. No, we scored first, and they scored, and it, so it was all tied at the end of the game. And then we lost. Aww. That's life, but That's it was it. fun. <laughs> all right. Um, any other closing notes, or shall we head on out for the evening? Thanks again, everybody, for coming on and watching the show. And we'll be back next week. All right, take us out. All right, what's the monster?